Google Lothar Mayer and you'll find he's a dangerous, weapons-crazed, reckless driver bent on endless subterfuge. The description doesn't jibe with a soft-spoken executive sitting in his office talking about the finer points of analog design, but then Lothar Mayer, the Linear Technology Corporation CEO, is unfamiliar with Lothar Mayer, the character in the video game Roll Cage. Did you know that? <laughs> I have to admit I'm not. I, 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 what kind of game? I was, I was doing a Google search on your name, and you're a game character in a game called Roll Cage. Roll Cage, huh? I think you're a car. It's a, it's a first and last name. It's like a yeah. Oh wow, that's it's pretty like good. A, it's that's like news. a crash bar <laughs> game, you know. I gotta look that up on Google. <laughs> uh, what are the odds of that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's called Roll Cage. Um, and and so here's a trust me, that's somebody else. It isn't me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not moonlighting as a gamester. Here's a here's a an, an excerpt. The the and this is a description of the character. Um, in this game of about a dozen other characters. The weapon-crazed Lothar is an, also an accomplished driver with skills to match that of his roll cage. He brought up the idea of utilizing weaponry to take the roll cage games back underground and has a mysterious contact with him who supplies him with hundreds of missiles, shields, and other weapons. Because of his love for weapons and his uncanny ability to use them effectively, Lothar is the most dangerous player in the game. I, you know, that could be me. You know, there's a lot of skills there a CEO could use. Um, how's 2007 shaping up, um, both from an industry standpoint, in your opinion, and from a linear standpoint? You, you just had earnings. You've done a couple of things on finances that we'll get into, but let's start at the top. Well, you know, 2007 has, uh, you know, started out uh, a little bit on the slow side for, for us and as well as for, for the rest of the industry. But uh, we uh, just uh, completed our earnings call a few days ago, and in that earnings call, we announced that uh, you know, our sales going forward are, are going to be growing. And our sales are forecasted to grow somewhere between 3 and 6% going into uh, the, the current quarter. And so our sense is that uh, we've reached kind of the bottom of uh, this ind uh, industry-wide uh, inventory correction that's been going on. And uh, we, f we feel, at least for ourselves, that uh, that's turned around and, uh, you know, we're seeing a little bit of uh, wind in our sails for our sails and, uh, you know, guiding the street to uh, give us some growth this quarter. There was, you know, if you, if you reverse, fast reverse to August or July of last year, there seemed to be some decent hope for the fourth quarter and the holiday season and all that, which tends to drive a lot of the semiconductor industry. Um, but that didn't materialize, and so there a lot of companies had some inventory issues. What what was? Give us a sense for where that slowdown was coming from. You know, I I don't think that it was really one issue. I think it's really the cross of uh, several issues. I think in general, the the I'm speaking particularly now for the analog segment of the market. I think uh, you know we as uh, suppliers and our customers were maybe a little bit more optimistic about the strength of uh, the December quarter. And uh, that strength you know, really didn't materialize as much as we thought it would. And you know, all kind of softening in, in the marketplace ultimately results in some sort of inventory correction. And so I think coupled with uh, not as strong of a December quarter uh, ended up with uh, you know, our customers and the uh, contract manufacturers accumulating more inventory than they would like is really what uh, ended up making December a, a relatively soft quarter for, for I, I believe, virtually everyone in the, in the analog space, and also setting up uh, the March quarter as not being a particularly strong quarter as well, as uh, you know, all, all of the, the channels bled off the uh, inventory that uh, accumulated in the December quarter. That's good news. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the investment side, the finance side. Um, you guys, I, I noticed in doing a little research, or the 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 highest ranked semiconductor company in the Business Week, 50, out of all these semiconductor companies in the world. Um, you've had a long uh, history of um, high profit margins, well-managed company, continues to this day. The stock doesn't get the respect, not that you're alone, the entire industry is kind of like the Rodney Dangerfield industry now, doesn't get any respect. You've taken some steps recently 
um, to address that with the stock buyback. Tell us a little bit about the whys and wherefores. Yeah, Linear has always been a, a very uh, conservative company when it comes to its financials, and uh, you know clearly the uh, three billion dollar uh, repurchase through an accelerated stock repurchase was a pretty bold move on the on the part of the company, and uh, you know, th that was really designed to be a bold move. What we wanted to do was, uh, you know, have the market, uh, you know, give some recognition to, um, you know, linear technology. And, uh, you know, the company has had 84 consecutive quarters of uh, positive cash flow. And uh, during those uh, 84 quarters, we've uh, accumulated a, a fair amount of cash, almost $2 billion in cash. And, uh, you know, in the past, the company has done share repurchases as has increased its dividend and in, in the last probably four or five years the company has repurchased or returned to shareholders nearly two billion dollars of value through uh, share repurchases and dividends and quite frankly it didn't make much of an impact on our stock so we decided this time around do something that's a little bit more bold instead of uh, spreading it out over a long period of time we decided to do this particular transaction over a relatively short period of time the uh, three billion dollar repurchase is going to occur over a fairly near period of time of about nine months and uh... you know the the, the feedback we've received from uh, investors and shareholders has been very positive and the feedback we've received uh, from the market uh... you know re reflects that enthusiasm so you know it looks like uh... we finally got uh, the attention of uh, our investors so yeah you got a nice little bump um, some others in the analog mix signal sector seem to ride that bump um, last week, I guess it was, or maybe this week. How long, um, how long do you anticipate the glow from this um, helps linear stock? Again, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to give you know, forward guidance on, on, on the stock's performance, but uh, you know, this, this repurchase is, is going to, w was really not done as a, as a short-term pop to the stock. It was really um, a, a, a tool to uh, uh, improve the the stock's performance over the long period of time. This uh, share repurchase is accretive, and it continues to be more and more accretive uh, the, the more the, the company grows. When I mean accretive, I mean accretive to earnings per share. So uh, you know, I, I we're, we're all grateful that the stock took a, a an upward movement, pretty good. In the, you know, the first week after its announcement, but really the intention of the this, this repurchase was to uh, enhance our, our stock price really in the long term.